Okay, there we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another day of Valorant Challengers presented by Zenny and Zippo. And uh, yesterday, we had a couple matches. We had two matches. It was going the way of Moy Shopify and Oxygen. And today, we have other two matches to go. But to start off, first of all, I'm your host, Dryad. And this round, I'm joined by Eyehole Shift and Gumpers. We're going to be uh, taking us through the whole action today because it seems like it can be either very close Gumpers today for some matches or it might be very one-sided i i for sure i think we're going to be surprised i mean i have some bias towards <laughs> towards certain teams just because i know the players a little bit more yeah. well but you, you know to be realistic with it as well clip that uh, don't clip that don't clip that don't clip that <laughs> hey no i was honest listen i love winthrop to death and i've met these teams like in person at steval championships and they're super super sweet people but it's like, you know, when, when you have to choose the pick em, sometimes you got to go with a realistic answer. And I'm, I'm not going to say anymore until we get to that point, but. Yeah, right. we're going to see what's going to happen in Shift. You've, I mean, you and I have been doing challenges since last year, and I know you've been doing a couple days here and there for this year. Can, can you tell me also as, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the new one here. I'm, I'm, I'm the, the new. <laughs> The new student in Challengers today. So, it, how have you seen the the teams? It's just been one match for most of them, is, except for the ones yesterday. Do you think it's looking the same as last year? What do you think? Yeah, I, I think we're going to start the season pretty much identical to how we started the season last year, where we're going to have a handful of squads that are well and beyond a doubt above everybody else. I think right now you're looking at top three between M80, Moisex Shopify, and Oxygen. However, I've seen a lot of growth, I think in particular out of this Turtle Troop team making a couple of changes. They've looked pretty solid. Uh, and then on top of that, there's a pretty tight gap, I would say, between everybody else. Whereas mm. like last year, we had a couple of squads that were very clearly kind of at the bottom of the league on either group. Uh, and I feel like this year we actually have a more competitive uh, basis of squads. And I think that's kind of a credit to a longer off season where a lot of teams did participate, but also you've got a collegiate team, for instance, that we're talking about today that has yeah. gotten a lot of reps through CVAL. So, you know, teams are getting better, players are getting better. And I I think we're going to have a really competitive season in front of us. And speaking of those teams that are at the top, at the bottom, let's take a look at the schedule and how things have been shaping up. And again, it's only been one full week, a week and yesterday, what, the matches that we got to see. And yesterday, it was this Oxygen and Moist Shopify taking the wins 2-0. I think the first matches, I remember, it was very chaotic. But today, we have Turtle Troop against Winthrop and TSM against the Glazers. This is how... Things are looking right now, Gompers, and as Chef was saying, it seems like it could look the same as last year. It's in some teams being at the top, being very clearly at the top, and the rest is just setting right now. I'd have to say I agree. I, I mean, I feel like it's been pretty evident so far within the first two weeks. We are in the last day of this week as well. So kind of looking at that and seeing the teams and the, just the dominance of, of the performance so far. Honestly, Moist X Shopify has been catching my eye. M80, for example, as well. So definitely, I, I definitely feel like there is that, that disparity that we can see somewhat. And hey, we know we got two matches in Group B and three of the teams of the four we have have yet to get a win yet. So someone's going to walk away one and one. Someone's going to walk away 0 and 2. Maybe two teams walking away 0 and 2. But it is going to be, I think, interesting just kind of again to kind of build out the storyline of who's going to be on top of Group B because at the moment it feels like there's going to be like who wants to be the second best team in Group B because catching up to M80 is going to be a little bit difficult, but it feels like the rest of the group is actually pretty tight to one another. So it should be an interesting day. A couple of changes here and there, but I made you still at the top. But today and for our first match, we're going to be having Turtle Troop against Winthrop. And as Gumpers was saying, Winthrop, that collegiate team that made it to challengers that in a way they don't have expectations for that reason, right? It's a team that people are not really expecting to make it here. And that puts a little bit less pressure on them. But on the other side, Turtle Troop has some big names, including... Uh, players that we've seen at the very top in tier one, including Stellar last year in 100 Thieves. Corey has been seeing that tier two of at uh, the beginning of Valorant. If, remember, if we remember, it was at tier one. And B Dog Adder, all of those names that we've heard of, Gompers, they now have to face each other. And I, this, I find this match so interesting because it's kind of the old school Valorant with Corey oh, and yeah. Stellar, and the new one with this collegiate team that's coming in. It's such a different change than what we're used to, right? These tier two teams that have established names within tier two. And it, Turtle Troop is a perfect example of that, a team that has taken everybody's 
Ladies Hearts by Storm versus Winthrop University, you know, a collegiate team. Who would have thought? And this <laughs> team even said themselves they're not expecting themselves to, you know, be that storyline team, the team that everybody's rooting for, but they have expectations for themselves and they're just looking to prove to everybody, not even everybody, to themselves that they deserve to be here. I think the other part that's really impressive about this Winthrop team, and I feel like with collegiate squads, it could go kind of one way or the other. You know, I spent a lot of time watching collegiate, a different collegiate esport yet to be named, but it's one of those situations that like, sometimes you just get like the God squad. You, all of a sudden you just open up yeah. tryouts to whoever happens to be on campus <laughs> and people show up and they're just unbelievably talented. But the thing that can kind of happen from there is, well, as you start to kind of come up against adversity, in particular, this Winthrop team, not just in their Seaval region, but now here in Challengers in particular, you can either really fade apart and be like, wow, we just kind of suck and we're just not getting it together to where we need to be. Or you take it kind of as a bullheaded approach, like, we're talking about it's not just the fact they have nothing to lose they have a lot to prove in terms of what a collegiate squad could look like in a healthy system and kind of speaking to it the winter b-sports program has always kind of provided a very healthy ecosystem so i'm really excited to see what these guys have to offer because they've topped their region a number of times in cval and now they have a chance to kind of take it a step up in the semi-pro scene and we're going to see how that's going to shape up because they have a pretty tough match today against Turtle Troop as we take a look at the way that they've been playing, the changes that they've made. This is a Turtle Troop that if we remember last year, they've made some pretty significant changes and they they still are able to keep the essence of the team Gomper, something that I really like about them and adding these bigger names that again leaves us with high expectations and really is going to put to a test how what Winthrop can do and how they're going to answer against these tougher teams it's i would have to say yeah it's the same thing for both teams you know just trying to develop and and maybe even so just find some sort of way to counter that the gameplay i know turtle troop respects this team as well the same way they would any other team which is great and like you said adding these new names adding somebody that's super super strong uh, you know like that addition of corey and stellar so it, it's definitely those things where you're looking at it and you, and you have to ask yourself what is the goal of this team and turtle troop they said it themselves right they want to be the first uh just i guess you could say free agent team that makes it to americas so that's the goal and i think the other thing on top of that is and we'll talk about tsm later but one of those two teams has to come out and say we are the second best team in this group because <laughs> tsm got beat up by m80 last week and to be fair we haven't really seen turtle troop get tested too much although they did go game three versus the glazers which was unexpected you would have thought based on the names on paper they could have cleaned that up no worry so there are some hiccups and some obstacles that both these two teams have to hurdle and for troop in particular this is a matchup you have to be thinking we got to come out we got it 2-0 we need to prove to the world that we can be at the top of this group b and as we've been talking on the other side is that Winthrop squad, the the one that came with and still has kind of no expectations by the community. They know it's a, it's a team that maybe had the longest road and has always had, right? This is a team that has played so many collegiate matches because we know how collegiate goes. There's one tournament here, one tournament there. They have that experience and they're able to keep that core since last year, pretty much even longer for a couple of them, including Moves. I think Moves is, is a big highlight for them, but uh, Bumpers, it, again, is is a new deal, and I think for Winthrop, the key here is going to be trying to capitalize, capitalize on those mistakes that they saw from Turtle Troop, because against the Glaciers, they did not look too clean. And it's kind of like what you said, right? It's Challengers is such a different environment, and I think that's really what will challenge the scene to not only be better in both collegiate, but also in the scene, in the tier two scene in general. And I think this is such a huge step up for just the collegiate scene in general. Not a lot of respect is given out to collegiate, I feel like, as much as it should be and now it's like this team is making these changes to show we are just as capable as anybody else and it's gonna be seeing how that is gonna play out especially when it comes to this specific shift when it comes to the ecos when it comes to really understanding how you take an advantage at the beginning of the round and you're able to close it out yeah, you know, there's a lot of intriguing points when you look at the macro of how teams match up against one another. And again, the sample size is one, but these are some very peculiar and very particular statistics that I thought were really intriguing. In particular, for both of these two squads, they ranked number one and number two in week number one when they were set up with an eco advantage going into a round. 15 and one for Total Troop, seven and one for Winthrop University, which is great, especially when you look at that win percentage. But where the fumble comes from, in particular for Winthrop, when you look at that next stat down, that is when the full buy is matched between both teams and what that win-loss looks like. 
Winthrop was the worst team when sitting at a, a round that is their full purchased as their opponent is also full purchased. Only 8 and 17, which is good enough for 32%, which is really, really bad. I hate to put it plainly. <laughs> and then on the other side, 52% for Turtle Trip is not bad, not great. It's just kind of in the middle of the road. So it's one of those things that you can tell the win condition for these teams is they need to get up early and they have to hold that advantage for a long period of time. That's where they're getting the majority of their rounds. And in particular, when you're looking at both these two squads, that share that category there will be this early battle of who can get that advantage first and then on the other side of it who can improve when they're pulling full purchase rounds that they're going to have between both squads so that's kind of i thought was an interesting point after week number one i think in particular for winthrop coming off of a loss but still going seven and one when they're at an advantage just tells me get to an advantage more often win the pistol win the anti-eco try to find a way to punish your opponents when they're trying to save things like that create those eco advantages whenever possible and is it and it's always a big deal right there's always those teams that get the first kill but then what happens right they end up losing the round and it and it is something that makes or breaks a team and especially in a, in a season like we have for challengers where you need to just keep going and going but speaking of these two teams we get to see how those maps are gonna look like i really like what i saw from them last week gompers i think they showed us a little bit of everything both of them are kind of having different styles in the duelist role sometimes in some maps not having duelist but we have have Gomper, Sunset, Lotus, and Ascent. What do you make of that? I I enjoy this. I am interested to see, because I know for both of these teams, the, the dynamic is so different, right? Winthrop mm -hmm. loves to abuse the usage of Duelist, and I, I, I completely love that. I know a lot of the time it's the double Duelist composition they like to run. The Reyna coming out, mostly because of moves. <laughs> so I, I am going to say I'm expecting Arena to pop out at some point uh, within these maps just to be that sole, just like selfish Duelist player to really frag out. But I, I think this really is in favor ever so slightly for Winthrop, but just because they do tend to play these three maps the most uh, within the pool of maps that they have played throughout the year. Yeah, the, the one and the three are definitely going to feel really comfortable for Winthrop. The Lotus, they really haven't given too much of a significant look at, and I think more in particular, we'll talk about it when we get there. Winthrop have kind of had a little bit of identity crisis in terms of what they want to run on the map, so we'll see what they decide to do when we eventually get there. But getting into Sunset, this was kind of one of the maps that they looked at to really utilize throughout the qualifier as a chance to get to this point in the first place. It was a staple throughout pretty much every single round that they played. Some good, some maybe not so much, but for the most part, they at least send this thing if they do lose it to a 10 13 9 13 type stat line so they're very competitive on the map we have not seen turtle troop play this map yet of course their results are a little bit lopsided because we really just have the one series worth of records to kind of look at considering the pickup nature of the squad overall so i think we'll learn a lot about what troop will actually bring to the table not just on the map but kind of maybe collectively as a full-on team especially with the rest of the series also being kind of open-ended in terms of versatility and variety that you could pull in agent compositionally to try to create advantages uh, as they go through the series. And also following one of those stories, right, when we haven't seen Sunset from Turtle Troop and we talked about them implementing and adding Corey to this roster, this is a player that we've seen sometimes on the duel list, mainly on the race. Um, most you can see him showing off and, and looking so much better on the race and then it's been kind of the question of is he going to keep playing the race is he going to force his race into maps like this one i feel like it would be very fitting because we've seen new things right we've seen from him a neon a yoru a keo last year playing a little bit of sova so i think there's going to be that question of how gompers this is going to shape up and if we're going to continue to see Corey as the primary and main duelist of a squad or things are going to change according to the map especially again for a sunset that we haven't seen anything of yet. They've been bringing out some pretty odd compositions from time to time. So I would say they're gonna, they, they, they take in that role, right? They, they know they do this. They like to test things out. So I would say for Turtle Troop as well, you know, I'm not saying that there isn't a lot of respect it, that should be owed to Winthrop. I think Winthrop is an amazing team, but sometimes when you know you're looking at Winthrop as this this underdog team, you feel like you have the space to do stuff like that, and and you know maybe put in the Yoru on on a map like Sunset. So I, I am looking forward to maybe something along the lines of a composition we haven't seen before. Yeah, I, I like the call. Just kind of quickly piggybacking off of that, Turtle Troop. When we go back and rewatch their series from the, their match versus the Glazers, it was one of those situations they looked to take ground quickly. They're playing things like Neon, mm -hmm. playing things like Yoru. They're looking to find that information and capitalize as soon as humanly possible. They're not looking to fiddle around with 
testing out setups, stretching defenses. They want to attack you, and they want to attack you quickly. So Winthrop needs to be prepared for that going into the setup. And again, when it's something that we haven't seen, even on the other side, right, for one throw, but you guys mentioned that they played in the open qualifier, they played it a couple of times, but recently things could have changed because it's, it's been a little bit of time, especially since collegiate, since the, the first match for to change things around, to play around new things. Like Gompers was saying, uh, adding that variety of moves was before not playing as much of the arena. And now we saw it in Icebox. We're starting to see teams running different things. And I think Sunset is going to be the perfect one, but it's time we jump into the agent select see how those agents are going to shape up and if it's going to be what we were talking about or it's going to be something completely different yeah lots of curiosity questions I, I think as well just to kind of again really take the conversation home winthrop is dealing with a bit of a losing streak right now after the loss to sad esports that's part of it for sure but they also dropped series to both the fisher teams in seaval at the beginning yeah. of uh, february and march so that's not great news in mm -hmm. terms of kind of riding a bit of a momentum wave but this is the expected composition from winter but they have played pretty much throughout the entirety of their qualifiers everyone is here ready to go turtle trip on the other side we could deadlock in the mix here gompers this will be a fun little look i love this i love the deadlock i think the deadlock honestly in a map like this I i've seen it from time to time but i do see the the overall value of it, it it's such a good hold on the defense uh, turtle troops starting off on the attack i i genuinely think this is going to be great for maybe lurk holds or something along the lines of just keeping the opposing team back for that retake so it, overall composition wise turtle troop are just looking to keep a solid hold whether it be for that post plant whether it be for that defense so this is a composition that really does suit the play style of turtle troop in my opinion yeah yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I, well, I like it on paper a lot. We'll, we'll see if we actually like it in practice. It's going to be curious, I just think, to look at how Troop are going to potentially use this deadlock. Yeah. Because it's just, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, shoot myself in the foot here. I just feel like deadlock, based on how we've seen her played in the past, very limited amounts, it just feels very predictable. Like in yeah. terms of when you're placing abilities it mean like it's very if they do this then that will happen afterwards like it just feels like it kind of gives some stuff away and again it's new to the competitive mix but i haven't really seen teams kind of use her abilities to kind of bait out counter util as much as other agents that kind of fulfill her same role so yeah i'll be really just i think immediately in, in just kind of focused on what adder wants to do in terms of play style uh with the deadlock in hand yeah, I think it is an interesting choice, uh, especially with obviously you got the controller coming in with the brimstone. And when I, I listen, I said I was expecting weird, and I do feel like we definitely <laughs> see weird, yeah. well, rightfully so. Like this is this is not normal. <laughs> like it's a composition you wouldn't expect. Uh, but already off the rip, I, I mean, pretty much just setting up for something wow. big here, Corey with the first pick. Yeah, looking to get aggressive off the raise, not fully working out. Corey tapping away through the cyber cage. Trades go back and forth, and ultimately, it is Troop with the numbers, but the health pools are very, very low. So the follow-up gunfights might be a little bit easier for Winthrop, and so they will be. Prowler comes through. That will connect on to Corey. And b Dog. well, he's got absolutely nowhere to go. So trades will be nice, and Winthrop will take the pistol. Yeah, tons of util use on the initiator side. And, and it's good because such an aggressive push already pushed down through mid from TTR. I'm assuming Winthrop was expecting that. Lots of heavy pressure down mid. So I, I do like the approach. I think it's great with moves investing so much into utility just to just to scounge for that first round because they know they need it. I mean, this is a strong Absolutely. team when you're playing against Turtle Troop. Yeah, and just to kind of speak on it, you know, looking at the pistol stats from week one, neither team great, neither team poor, just kind of right in the middle of the road. In fact, both of them went three and three in overall pistols. So you don't expect to see too many advantages there. But like we talked about in the pre-show, it is all about who can set up their eco advantage early. Winthrop, of course, will have that here in round number two. Tribal Troop just kind of stacking up towards the front using this Viper screen just to kind of create some distraction for Winthrop. Yeah, already especially trying to get something down with a breach waiting to put down some sort of fault line taking some of these players actually by strike so it does push back the, the push just a bit though slowly working themselves back up so ttr planning on that re-hit question is when and i'll be curious if adder is going to try to follow up off of like a prowler with something like the sensor trying to control a little bit of these tight corners i i, I kind of figured that the deadlock may find more value kind of over towards the B side of the map. Mm -hmm. But of course, we're not really going to get too much out of this because it is just a couple of the sheriff and ghost upgrades here on the anti-eco. Lots of free space, though, over towards Elbow. 
Taunt will come in for both sides. Just trying to scout things out just a touch. And Ashy getting to work, just spamming through the sky smoke. And first blood will be tallied. Winthrop with the numbers. Yeah, they push back for now, though. Winthrop. Spike planted. They have so much util on the side of Infiltrator. They get in, oh, yeah. they get that ground, and they can pretty much just secure this. Again, with pistols, too. Like, it, it, it's so evident that it's possible right there. for this team to just have a complete flawless in the round. The close up angles. And now Fault Line to come. Flashes behind that as well. Infiltrator just tries to go right over the top. Pull Stellar's aim around, but doesn't make a difference. Stellar still finds three with the classic. Upgrade that to a Guardian. That'll work for four. 1v1. Ah, runs out of ammunition. But boy, I'll tell you, Stellar nearly <laughs> saved the day. And Jerk will find the defuse to get the second, although test it. Hey, the name fits. Uh, jerk finished <laughs> everyone off because he's a jerk. I, I don't know. I don't know how else to say. Went through university, taking that one in by stride. So two and out. It, it's well expected when you are saving the way that TTR did. But I'm interested. Yeah, not actually going to invest too much into this round. So a bonus uh, may be a bonus. No, no buys, no hero rifles or anything. I think Jerk is more capable though with the Guardian than we think here. Um, but definitely setting up for retakes on A is such an interesting take. They've done it mm. repetitively so far these last two rounds. And I think that's one of the staples, too, when you trust in all the utility that comes to bear. Uh, in particular, you look at Nashi, who has been a great controller player for no, what it's worth. Yeah. I remember watching him in Seaval, and I remember his breach being something that's just like, wow, I would not want to play up against the game. <laughs> Nightfall immediately earned and used for Turtle Trip. That'll clear out the majority of the A site. Lots of smoke in oh. play, and wow, Gucci nearly able to take down Weeded through the smoke. It'll still be enough, though, for Stellar to get the plant, and retake we go again. Yeah. Work up for Matter, though, and actually does a good job on the wall. <laughs> Moves was just stuck with absolutely no way to entry. So at that point, you got to take that 1v1 and hope you get something out of it. Molly. Yeah. Post plant, though, positioning already set up from TTR. And the main objective here, again, just for Winthrop, is to find these first engagements. Try to get themselves on the site. Infiltrator already stuck up top. Second one taken down by Weeded and a third, which honestly brings a beautiful flawless, a Zenny flawless at that. Insert Twitch copy pasta. We did more like he did. He's on a <laughs> burner. Three, two, start for him. Three kills in the round. Yeah. And wow. And they were clean. I'll tell you that much. So a couple of hero moments coming through here for Troop to give themselves a gunning chance in round number two and then a flawless in the third. Yeah. So again, the eco kind of turns itself on head because now we're going to have that full versus full setup. But light armor is still going to be in possession here for the side of Winthrop. And for Troop, hey, that's now a couple of successful quick plants over towards the A site. And ooh, Winthrop is actually going to try to get a little frisky over towards B main with an aggressive spy cam. Nothing else really to follow. But but the fault line's right there, and Nashi will follow up on a couple of nations off of it. And I love that. It's wherever Nasi is, there's going to be such a hard, aggressive push coming out of sight. So then it's super, super punishable. But of course, CTR get laid back. They lose their duelist. There's absolutely nothing to do here other than maybe wait a couple seconds, grab a rotation, but check in their ground. Tons of information already coming down through mid, especially with that deadlock util. And it's one of those things, again, where it's just like... Do you is there enough initiation on troop outside of just having stellar? Well, that's the real question here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got no more sky smokes for Corey. You've got a couple of snake bites and a Molly. We've got Molly's. That's all we got. All we, all we got is Molly's and the ability to suppress based off the barrier mesh and the sensor for Adder. Cyber <laughs> trap will be enough to alert the defense that action is likely on the way 40 seconds to go and the hit is over as very mesh gets placed to block off the coordinated push through market and yeah, they take the win condition with the amount of players that they have on set right here. Nice. 30 seconds now they're left. just trying to find some space to bring themselves back onto the site they wait for the spike to be planted interesting but tons of util to utilize here nasi is yep. set in stone for this that and boobs full kit worth of utility to spend to try to open up this backside hit but the defense of this plan is really deep. I mean, this utility is not going to connect really onto anybody besides Adder, who's got a lot of help nearby. Just a shoulder to continue with Hamakori through the smoke for two. Adder just staying safe. Hold the ground. And well, will he ever. Post plant success looking pretty solid for Troop. It was so beautiful, too. The approach, everything, too. It was just the, the individual entry just slowly working in one by one. Nobody was working with the angles there. And I felt like you had such a good pinch coming down on Adder, especially with two players coming from both sides of Pillar. But it just ended up 
the, the, the timing just ended up being very, very bad. Of course, the spray through smoke taking Gooch down. It was everything slowly getting messy, especially with the wind condition they had had from that first shot coming through from Nasi. So, uh, I mean, kind of unfortunate when you're Winthrop, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, looking to push in through, right? Having somewhat of a default, just playing against the aggressiveness that Winthrop likes to play with. Well, look at the difference. I mean, again, we're in a half by situation, oh. but Winthrop not finding a lot of success off the post plant. Now, all of a sudden, taking a little bit of aggression to contest the early game, and that will work out not just for the first blood, but also an orb. So, moves will be one off the nightfall. Wow, and we're going. We're going deep here. That's a great barrier match, though. Again, just kind of separating the play, and that's enough for Stellar to tee off through it. That is pinnacle gameplay coming out of Adder and definitely showing some of the strength of Deadlock. And, well, <laughs> Jerk, he's a beautiful butterfly. Look at the cocoon. Easy kill. Please tell me you know that reference. Have you seen A Bug's Life? Mm, I, mm, actually, yes, yes, I remember. Okay. I just, I just remembered when you said that. I remembered when he, like, yeah, like the little, the little clown caterpillar or something. That's it. Yeah. That's it. All right. I maybe I'm old as well. I, <laughs> I think. I'm definitely old. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't look a day over twenty, so you're good, honestly. Damn, yes. Uh, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing how Winther kind of recollect themselves back into the game Get it's been i would say an unfortunate eco round to kind of bring themselves back from they did invest just a little bit i'm not yeah. seeing too many light shields though except for one on moves but b-dog already aggressively going towards backside yeah he's gonna get a little bit of information that jerk is nearby knives will connect paranoia is out smoke to counter but gucci will find the elimination at least keep the trade alive problem is again turtle trooper just finding free entry onto these sites and this was kind of what i saw when they played week one is they're not going to try to fiddle around with getting cuter on the map. They're going to hit something. They're going to hit it hard. That's exactly what we've got here with the 4v4 post plant. With a slow walk up. Honestly, this could work out. Smoke is just covering, but once that dissipates, it's really up to Weeded to hold down the backside. Of course, front being held down by Adder. Paint shell to slowly move back, but there's no conditioning happening to be made. Puck flash out. And now it's infiltrator infiltrating on the site. Yeah, problem is you still have Orbital Strike at the ready here for Turtle Troops. So you have to push through this. Corey keeping the gauntlet up. That's enough for him to hit the trigger. Pops out, finds himself one. Plus the follow on the spike and a what? Headshot through the smoke. I mean, Troop is just hitting a little different right now. I'll tell you that much. They're pretty good, I would say. And it's so, it's so surprising. Adder has like the ability to just hold a sight like it's nothing. And it's so interesting because they take so many players down uh, within milliseconds. And unfortunately, it didn't work out too well. I do really like how aggressive Winthrop is. I think the main issue that I'm noticing is just it's the, the timing of it is so off. And it, and it really does lead back to the fact that they just tend to separate themselves mm, mm. in such an awkward way where it, it doesn't work out. They're inf infiltrator making their way onto the site, luckily getting t uh, one at least, but then slowly working themselves past that smoke, allowing Corey to take these 1v1s. And then it just all falls apart. Yeah, and there's, look, it's not an easy solution to find on a map like Sunset, because this is not an atypical tempo for this map, where yeah. a team that starts to feel confident feels like they're the better squad. They're just going to hit you, and they're going to get the spike down immediately. And the problem is, defensively, it's hard to, like, play forward and contest, because you hard commit towards A, B feels wide open. Trying to mm -hmm. retake from the opposite side of the map is very difficult. You know, yada, yada, yada. But I think the problem here is, there may not just be enough trust into Jerk being able to hold the site kind of by himself as Cypher. He's gotten a couple of great spy cams. Like, he's yeah. getting a ton of info, but it doesn't really feel like that information is being utilized to try to contest at all. It's more of like a, hey, look, they're here. Okay, we already know that. So, like, I would like to see them try to set up more around Jerk and his utility to try to get a little bit more contest to make sure the spike plant is not as free as it is because there's really not even any gunfights happening before the spike gets planted. No, and I, I, I do like, though, coming through from TTR, you can see them actively readjusting themselves before they attack. It's they know that this team of Winthrop like to get aggressive and they're actually slightly punishing that. And I think that's really taking a grasp on it, hence why. And now there has to be this conversation as to what is going on. Uh, you know, what is going on? <laughs> I just noticed Moves actually shaved his head. If you don't know the story behind that, that is crazy. <laughs> I, I, oh my goodness. He had such luscious hair before too. It's, it's, <laughs> it's 
crazy. I'm gonna need you to tell this story for those in chat, definitely not me, who it's don't know this story. Tarek, Tarek was watching on his stream, like just moves. I believe they did like a content piece with Rinthrop, and moves was like, if I get 500 subs, 500 likes, you know, I'll shave my head. Tarek was like, are you serious, bro? And then he linked the YouTube video in the chat, and it just blew yep. up, and now moves is bald. So, okay. RIP in the hair. Um, I, I mean, honestly, respect for doing it. I like, I wouldn't. <laughs> That's fair. I, this is news to me. I, I missed all of this. So consider me an audience member to this storytelling <laughs> moment. <laughs> it's great though. Honestly, it, uh, it suits him. Yeah. All right. That's fair. I mean, Hey, I didn't notice anything. I was like, man, this guy's just rocking a bald head. It's fine. You know, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do sometimes. So getting through this tech pause, and we can at least tally what the inventory will likely look like for Winthrop. Yeah. Not the greatest of news. Four in a row here for Troop. And again, all of it's been pretty categorized by the fact that Spike is getting down. In five of the six rounds we've had so far, the Spike has gotten down and gotten down quickly. So this is not a round that you would anticipate Winthrop's able to kind of change that. But I, I do like the idea from a couple rounds previous where they were trying to take aggressiveness with stingers and sheriffs. Just pull that with a, maybe a phantom combo, something yeah. like that. Just try to play some bait and switches. Try to catch someone a little bit off guard because right now Troop is just walking all over them. I, I will be honest. I think there's so much. They're, they're heavily relying on the breach to do a lot of the work in gaining a good point. access to the extremities too. I'm noticing a lot of the time Nasi is paired with two players. And then it's just so much reliance on getting a first engagement when they go to the extremities of sight. And then after that, they wait patiently and they hope that the retake works. I, I think there needs to be some sort of play around that and maybe have more. They're, they're playing too much for just the outside picks. Sure. And to me, sometimes that, that really does take a toll. Again, how Turtle Troop is starting to adjust to that. So hopefully, uh, you know, when this tech pass ends, it's one of those ideas where, okay, well, you know, maybe we can keep that cipher information. Like you said, Jerk getting so much intel and then not really playing off of that and then kind of leaning towards that as well. Yeah, that's fair. Again, there's so many different ways that you could break down the problems that exist. It just comes down to what Winthrop feels like they can do here. And again, there is an opportunity to maybe make a bit of a mess here in this upcoming round. Yeah. Especially off the fact that, you know, Stingers can find some successful areas to work around. But I think a lot of this needs to be, again, like we talked about, how are we really relying on the utility we have? Because let's be candid, it's not just the fact that Jerk setup has found value, but not really converted upon. Yeah. Infiltrator's played a pretty one-dimensional game so far. He's trying to just dash on in when you feel that there's an opportunity. Maybe there's a chance he can delay more with things like the boom bot and the paint shells. Rather than trying to be a fragging-based duelist, he can be a little bit more supportive. So there are things that we can look towards, but this round we will not get those answers. Oof. Nice shot from Infiltrator. Gets us off not just for a first blood, but there's a chance through the Prowler maybe the push for the weapon, but they decide otherwise looking to reinforce the B site. Oh, that's great. They get one taken off of A, especially with Weeded having that, that kind of distraction wall on the other side of site. They know that this is not the site they want to go to, though, of course, plant already coming through. So you see that retake and it gives them an advantage, honestly, in my opinion. You got two ultimates. Yeah, Infiltrator already popping the showstopper here, looking for something big and finding it. It's at least one to take uh, and Corey with a three. It's just, I don't, it just feels too individualistic. Big paint standing. shells. That will work, Ooh. though. Okay, speaking of individualistic, hold on. We may have an A-Center. On a Eco. Spent. And an Eco, of all things correct. Two rifles in hand, but V-Dog can delay a little while here. Second ping comes through. There goes the potential of the Ace, but Jerk follows up, finds the kill, and Winthrop will steal away a bit of a thrifty here to get to their third round. That's gonna hurt. I, I, and all of that happening just solely because of that showstopper. And that's where you really have to give respect to the raise. And this agent is crazy when it comes down to the eco rounds. And honestly, Infiltrator playing them to a T. I saw the op. I was not very worried. I actually really did like the approach on that. But Stellar kind of loading up an ultimate of their own. So I think this gives them somewhat of an advantage when you're looking at it, especially as the eco starts to get lower and lower with the round slowly yeah. going back to the side of Winthrop. And that's the thing is, remember last time that I fall was yeah. ready for Stellar, he just immediately spent it towards A and they ran right through it. Yeah. And based on where the barriers are and where everyone's stacked, I imagine we're going to see something very similar here. Early dark cover, so what? Everyone just walks through it. Not really the end of the world. Different setup here, though, for Winthrop. Eagles staying together, three of them around the elbow at mid. It may be a chance to come from behind, but this is just playing into the deadlock utility. I mean, these barrier meshes have been so penetrating, and now Infiltrator gets a little bounced around. 
there's the nightfall coming through across the site. Spike's going to get planted, and TTR are fully aware that the flank is here. Just comes down to can they deal with it as Infiltrator gets one good follow up flash and paint cell combo. But can they secure the kills? It's sloppy. Trades are through though. Wins are fighting back, but it's just taking so much time. Corey by himself, 1v2. Molly gets spent immediately, and he will get caught by Jerk, who kind of clutches up the round again. That was so great, too, the start to that TTR kind of using a combination of what the Leer is and the snake bite just to back off these players so they could find the angle, find the space, but it just gets shut down by Winthrop. And that's such a positive to the aggressive play that they like to do, sure. just because they're not afraid to take these 1v1. Sometimes it, it, it does get punished. I mean, to be completely honest, it is a very, very punishable play style, but they just know how to play the way that they do and they tend to win the fights because of that confidence and they know again you know in the beginning i stated they don't really feel like they need to prove themselves to anyone except themselves so it's the fact that they're not worried about what other people think about them that i feel like does carry them further as well yeah that's a fair point it's just one of those things like it becomes i think like if you were to be like a mini map to watcher if you're out there in chat yeah. it's just like every time went trying to play for a retake they're allowing this deadlock utility to completely control space the barrier meshes have blocked off not just the flanks, but over towards B. It's made the retakes one-dimensional, so it does feel this like is Adder is down. getting some value, mostly off the fact that Winthrop is defaulting to playing four retakes and not trying to contest anything early. Same thing's going to happen here. Play through A outside of it will come right on in, and Prowler will clear. There's a haunt, but, like, so what? Troops is going to go ahead and plan again. Welcome yeah, they're keeping the util as well. Uh, pretty heavy in their pockets for Winthrop. Especially waiting for this. I believe they do think that the Viper's Pit was going to get set up because they, they play the retake on the A site, expecting them to hit. Now the question is, how are they going to handle this? Adder still having the ultimate as well, so they could catch a pretty decent amount here. And they will catch Infiltrator. They're spamming it down, but it's just not killing the cocoon fast enough, although the pre fire through the smoke doesn't really connect. So now Wintham's got a bit of a reset. Time is going to be an issue here, though. A couple of kills good for the Eagles, but the Viper's Pit still needs to be cleared out, and there's just not a lot of utility to do it. We did just holding in a corner, dancing with the devil, in and out of poison clouds. I mean, it's green goo everywhere, and Winthrop just cannot work through it, and it's the same problems again. It's just taking so long to get these retakes going. Doing a good job at keeping themselves Remember to talk to intact, at there. least in a round where the there were some pistols evident there for Winthrop. Running it down in the smoke is crazy to me, but it was the only thing they could do. They they kind of just used every single piece of util, at, yeah. you know, at the beginning of that retake. Didn't allow for any space, or, or I guess any space in terms of what that util was going to be used for. It felt like kind of an explosion, and then boom, nothing. And you had nothing to work with. So taking the time to uh, to really put in that work for it. But I think Nasi's doing a pretty good job at keeping this team together under the pressure of Turtle Troop. I mean, the Turtle Troop is a super strong team. They know what they're yeah. doing. They've been through it time and time again. So, uh, tough competition. I mean, Nasi, I would say, and Infiltrator both have given this Winthrop team a chance in a number of rounds where you would think they have no chance here or they've secured rounds that yeah. you would think no way they get rounds here. I think the, again, I just, I feel like problematically, the only kills they've gotten out of Jerk so far have been at the end of rounds. Like, as a Sentinel, we're not necessarily looking for you to take first blood contact, but often, and what we saw a lot yesterday and the day before, is that the Sentinel players aren't just getting a single kill for their life. They're going one for two a lot of times on solo defensive setups, and it just doesn't really feel like they're finding too much value out of the Cypher here. It almost feels like they would rather have a Killjoy or something of the nature, just based off the fact that the trap wires are essentially being canceled for right free. Here. The cyber cages aren't really delaying troop at all. Yeah. I just kind of wish I saw Winther playing a more contest heavy game rather Get than just trying way. to default to play for retake. They're good at that too. At contesting and taking up the space. We can see it now, honestly, a very, very quiet approach though. This team has absolutely no idea. It's not something they've done before. Most down. Yeah. Especially slower than last time, but Corey reads into it. Oh, oh he turns around at the exact wrong moment, though. An infiltrator will get a freebie. This will cause Turtle Trip to move a little bit more rapidly to try to get the plant down and hopefully turn this into a more salvageable 4v5. The only bit of good news here is that that weapon is really far away, but here comes again the ultimate being spent. 
Rolling Thunder as well with the showstopper coming out. Infantry clearing a lot of space, but can't connect with the rocket. B Dog now with knives, able to trade this back to a 3v3 situation. A read that Gucci's playing on the opposite side of this A box, and the whole time the spike has not been planted. So Winthrop able to contest, but now it's just down to an even 2v2, and B Dog's holding the corner with knives down to the final two blades, and it looks like things will reset, hoping that Stellar can stay alive in the corner, and a smoke will allow him a bit of an exit. Oh, and they threw so much YouTube, but nobody played off of it. Spike still in hand as well, so they left. needed... At this point in time, honestly, I would say that this is a need to get aggressive, because now they have the spike, they make that rotation, they play for the post plans and hold the angle, so they have that advantage there. Unfortunately for Stellar, there's not a lot of health to be used, and the only thing uh, they can really throw down is spike maybe the tether there. It. Yeah. But... Yeah, slowly work up. One enemy remaining. Body shot will work. Oh, headshot was better. So now it's just down to B-Dog. He's going to need a reset. And he's going to try to go the long way around. And oh my, Winthrop is moving so slowly that this actually may work for a freebie. Nasi. Oh, One does he come back remaining. to check Ooh. this? Sure does, but the reset is in. Now to the 1v1. And oh, the legs have been seen of moves. You can just play the high ground here. Wait out the defuse. It gets to halfway. B-Dog calls him on it. There's a second toggle. Has three seconds to check it again. Nine HP. One more shot is all it takes. Ooh. Off of it again. One knife. All that's left. Now it's just down to what you can find off the Spectre. It's a jittery one, but it still comes through for Troop. A zipple clutch and a dream that has, in fact, been, um, been made, especially for Turtle Troop. Wow. And that's the hardest part about... Again, allowing this post plant to happen, if they had just shut it down when all of that util was expended, the moment Moob set it down as that fade down on the A site, then this would have been a completely different story. They probably would have lost one, but for the exchange of having that 1v1 a little bit earlier, I mean, the chances would have been a little bit larger. Um, just because 1v1 post plant scenario isn't necessarily the ideal, but again, waiting on Nasi to make that play down on the A site. They have it on lock, but... Yeah. Slow workup from TTR, just waiting for the information to slowly leak itself out. And this is a critical round here for Winthrop on the other side of it. You get this thing to at least five, that hits your mark in terms of what your normal average is for the most part. They sit around the 51% win rate this calendar year. And a lot of their rounds will actually start on the offense, so getting five would be just fine. One for one goes moves, playing again a little bit further forward. I like this. Stim Beacon gets placed, Corey sitting up for the smokes. Brawler does the same exact thing as it has done, moving through elbow. But Infiltrator playing a bit of an off angle. Weeded expects that. Oh no. What a shot from Weeded. And now Troop once again possessed the site. Utility could have been used there. They had the pain shell to push this team back, maybe gain some damage on the way. And it, it could have in turn just allowed them to wide swing that angle with a little bit more oomph. But. I mean, punishment comes forward, Infiltrator goes down, leaving it up to Nasi. No nice. utility, you slowly working up, but then again, it was in fact the paranoia. Just trying to make this team feel threatened. TTR, they have the post plant though. Yeah, you need to hit this though. That neural theft reveals that this is a very passive post plant setup. Nasi continuing to put flashes together. The Molly will pull them off just a second. Jerk, again, trades out one for one. Orbital Strike will get called. So much delay from Corey, but Nasi finds the kill. Yes, this diffuser will be killed, but is there enough time for him to jump on it? Oh, yeah, to finish it, absolutely got to halfway. So that is a massive round for Winthrop. <laughs> it's expensive for Troop, and there's a realistic yeah. chance that Winthrop could escape with the 6-6 six, six half. Last round in the half. There, there is a huge possibility. At Winthrop, they, they perform best when they can create that pressure. I think the defense is giving them a lot of leeway to do that. I'm more worried about, obviously, what's going to happen in terms of utility because i feel like that was the that's just the main issue as to why they lose a lot of people and the, the win condition early on is just moves sitting out in the middle of the angle a, a super important initiator putting their, their life on the line for uh, you know some sort of pick and i think yeah. it, it worked out for the best but not all the time though slow work up towards b three players again looking to push something out how about this though again early connection off the utility <laughs> Yes! This is what I was waiting for. Let's just wait for some sound cues and absolutely punish. Troop will make their way on towards site though through market. So the plant will still come out, but I mean, they are going to be bunkering up on this site in a 5v3. A high and a low ground already set up. Nightfall coming down as well and two tethers just to find the location of these players, but it's V-Dog to shut down. 
Whoa. And Gooch is just feeling super risky with a TP. And I saw the vision, but unfortunately, it just it just was not there. Be no more. Oh, this has gone from 100 to zero real quick for a Winthrop. Oh no, Stellar off the weapon exchange finds more. That is a 3v5 with stingers. Nightfall's attached Switching to two. Stars. And still there's no kills tallied. I, what? How, how, how have they done that? <laughs> they are having a great time. If you're, honestly, if you're Winthrop, uh, uh, kind of an unfortunate way to end. Oh man, and Gooch going down that way honestly just has to hurt, but TTR, they, they know how to handle uh, so much intense pressure. And the thing about it is, is just, they're just always, there's always somebody there for some sort of trade-off, which I really like. Again, the high, high ground, low ground that we just saw, you know, whether it be watching Pillar and then having somebody down towards backside just to make sure, hey, if somebody wants to take this pick off you, then I'll be there to make sure there's some sort of trade potential, which I, I think TTR handled pretty well. Unreal. Individual skill definitely playing out for Eternal Troop, but still five rounds in the defense for Winthrop is not bad at all. Pistol now coming through in the second half. Five-man stack for the Eagles over towards the B site. Double blast pack in. Infiltrator will find it is wide open for the taking. At or nearby, and a long flank on the way, but there is a trap wire in their way. Yeah, nice smokes, and they're just going to replenish as well, so they could pretty much have infinite coverage. Quite destroyed. At least in one angle that they feel the most important here. Yeah, and they're already getting so much ground down towards the extremities of backside. Pistol round is nice. important here for Winthrop to take back so that they can put themselves back on the board. Yeah, I love this. That Winthrop is just not electing to give away market. They are pushing back in towards it, and it's going to work out beautifully. Two kills in the round now. For the, the rest of Turtle Troop trying to hit from the back, but not going to work out whatsoever. And that is a very Pretty clean good. pistol for Winthrop, and I love the proactivity. Do not give away more space than you need to. Hopefully they hold that moniker for the rest of the half. Yeah, keeping this pistol around in their pockets. Especially with, uh, a, I mean, the initial play moving up to B was great. So much space taken up uh, within seconds just because the Omen smokes, which is amazing. I mean, TTR kind of aiming for a retake regardless on that site, but pistol rounds are kind of awkward <laughs> when it comes down to what you can and can't do. Although gun advantage still in the hands of Winthrop. So seven to seven, impossibility very, very large. Quick hit on the way. B Dog in the corner. May have gotten connected by the paranoia, so he has to give up the angle. But Winthrop have hit a bit of a pause here. Just kind of look at us, look at us. Never mind. No, we're not. Maybe trying to create a little bit of doubt around the play. B Dog working back forward. Does get Slide one, down, not bad. Eight. And the defense will rotate over to try to deal with this A hit. Playing a bit more of a teamwork game on the attack. Infiltrator kind of shining a little bit more, especially on the attacking raise, too. That jerk now finds Corey. I mean, you lose that controller. You slowly start to work yourself up. One through the smoke Enemy is the last one alive. Yeah, and they just hunt them down like it's nothing, to be completely honest with you. Yep. Much better for the uh, follow-up off the pistol as well. You get two rifles to survive through it into the bonus, plus a Spectre. Sheriff purchased and maybe something for Infiltrator as well. And yeah, I, I again, it's early days here in the second half, but I just love the fact that Winthrop are not just planting and playing passive, kind of like Troop were on yeah. their offense. They are getting aggressive through the spike plants and really making sure that Weeded and Adder just do not have an opportunity to reset up any of their utility. I, I, I love that. I, again, I really hope that they hold that throughout the rest of this half because that could be very successful for the Eagles. Smoke set up. In mid for TTR. Just to give themselves... I mean, some sort of potential to keep this team back just in case they do hit towards mid or B. But there isn't really a lot of stall out. They have no information. I mean, smoke gets set down, but it's stellar to hold us back. Yeah, the problem is B-Dog is such an aggressive lurk through A that he gets the three in the middle. This now forces with him to have to go quickly from the front. Infiltrator again. I like it. Stepping forward. Before he's still finding kills through. Looking for the long range shots, but not quite able to connect. Was Infiltrator, so it all falls with Nashi. Good first one. Follows up with a rifle and almost centers perfectly. Can't quite finish off the kill, so the bonus goes a bit astray. Just two kills for the repurchase for Troop in the next round. 
Yeah, luckily enough, having enough economy to invest into this round. Moves, it seems as though they're always so low. <laughs> they're, they're always buying the light shields, which sucks. But I, I will say, I don't... I, I love the fade. I think it's great. I don't think this is the agent that fits Moves and his personality at all. I, I, Moves normally typically plays on a duelist or arena, and I, I think that's where they tend to shine. So... There is a bit of that uh, difficulty in terms of really cracking out while having to also play for the team when it comes down to it. So a lot of the fights being lost out there. Um, at the yeah. same time, though, A-Site looking pretty tasty in the eyes of TTR. Right I mean, in I'll say. Yeah. Again, the early setup out of Adder. Definitely going to show how TTR try to use this deadlock. Is this going to suppress so much? And I don't know if Winter have gotten a good look at this or not, but they do kind of predict that this long flank is on the way. Very quickly timed, and Troop have to back away just to keep their lives, and that will happen. So a lot of motion for not a lot of action initially in the first 30 seconds, but Gooch will find one through mid-map, and that will stretch this defense very, very thinly. Yeah, it was good obedience to back up, but unfortunately with Corey. Right there. Kind of watching down in mid, they didn't necessarily know how many players were there. Though B-site, empty. The retake gonna have to settle for that if for TTR, especially with this aggressive push already moving forward. Yeah, and a huge clear as well to their name, so yeah, yeah. retakes coming in from TTR looking for some sort of engagement here. I like this, just stay away from Adder's setup. So now all of a sudden this retake becomes very hard pressed because you yeah. just have a molly and a poison cloud for we did, and a little bit of utility from Stellar. And they're going to go with this a little bit split. B Dog over towards Market side. Prowler may have caught that. But look at the post plan for Winthrop. Four players sitting back safe at A main. Nice flash trying to infiltrate her up for an elimination, but he does get caught. Now the Poison Cloud gets placed. Paranoia really not able to connect with too much. And honestly, this will be about the time the troops should try to toggle. Does force out a little bit of utility. Actually, a lot of bit of utility. But the kills as the smoke starts to fade all go the way of the wow. Eagles. And we've got ourselves an 8-8 game with a very clean post plant for Winthrop. And that was looking like it might have honestly not worked out in favor of Winthrop, especially as we did just set down uh, their smokes at such a perfect moment as that paranoia came out from Fuge. I thought for a second they, they were done. The smoke came up. TTR giving themselves a couple extra time. But, I mean, of course, Winthrop, they, some, I, I mean, they managed to make just funneling themselves in one portion just on the extremities workout. I, I think that was uh, pretty beautiful. They knew they just needed to spray through, maybe find some picks off Util alone. Seems like a site though. Smoke's getting uh, pretty interesting off TTR, especially down in mid. So back to a save here for Troop. With their chance to take the lead. Mm -hmm. Haunt just as a way to kind of scout out if there's anyone to take any shots through a main. There is. Fault line across the front, just trying to clear things out. Once again, the mesh kind of blocking any route over towards the corner. Follow up with the suppression. Does put everyone into a crouch position, but doesn't make much of a difference. Boop still finds the kill. The follow up from Stellar not quite able to connect. So Winthrop will walk away in a 5v4. I'm glad we also get to see that mesh and deadlock a little bit, because I feel like we haven't seen too much of what Deadlock is actually capable of. So right there, a good example. Adder just holding back this team, forcing them to take some sort of space down in mid. And now, I mean, the wall becomes a little less viable there, coming through from we did, because they've just controlled that space already. Boombot just to draw some consideration back towards B. The last pack immediately has infiltrated reinforcing, mm -hmm. and it is all on 30 Adder. 30 seconds left. One would be fine. Two would be incredible. Nightfall misses everything, but the shots are less than good. So smoke will get placed, and with that, Winthrop should get a plant off. The only thing that could maybe be a deterrent here is B Dog is on the pinch. Yeah, they're just gonna have to wait for Stellar to make some sort of call, especially though B Dog already getting taken out. That's gonna be huge disadvantage into the hands of TTR. Now, of course, Stellar goes down as well. So you got a nice cleanup coming through from Winthrop. Good stuff. Again, we talked about it in the pre-show. Both teams have really executed when they're on an eco advantage, not really giving away anything except for the one round that Winthrop was able to pull the Thrifty off. That goes there. So there are some things to consider here, talking about the strengths for both these two teams, what they saw in week number one. And very tested series for both of them. Troop coming out the victors in their three-map series where Winthrop could not quite close the deal. 
And here we go. I was going to say, at what point do we start to see B-Dog try to trust the operator? Obviously pretty known for that as his main stable gameplay. He will pull it out. Just hold on to A elbow. So this will take Adder's focus to be a little bit more aggressive here, being able to use more utility uh, just kind of through the round, knowing that B-Dog is here just to get set up for free. Yeah, nobody can push B-Dog too when they do plan on reloading the op or... There is that slight amount of time between shots. So a great wall at that, although with a lurk already coming through from jerk information leading towards mid, hearing that prowler and knowing, okay, at least the fades over towards me. Stopper out, infiltrator jumps right in, does not quite connect the player over towards the market side, but steps up, able to find Weezy on top of the site. Although the strike beat uses Corey does not want to get rid of this site and will force the 1v1 isolated against moves. Takes the win, and now there's all of a sudden numbers for troops defense 4v3. <laughs> and that's unfortunate. They tried to make it pass. Corey pretty much just shut everybody down when they tried to get themselves outside of B. It looked like a deer in headlights just not knowing what to do. They wanted to reverse everything and just leave, and they could not. One enemy remaining. Wow, great setup. And there we go again. They try to talk about the differences in halves so far. Troop showing that they want to stay on site. They want to contest these spike plants. It has not been easy for Winthrop to get the plant off. And with a setup that has double initiator, you would have figured the opposite would have been true of like troops saying, we don't want to deal with any of your utility. We'll just wait till it's all gone. But they're stepping right into the fray. It's worked out pretty nicely. Also keep right in mind here. that B-Dog was not seen last round. So this operator is still a bit of a question mark in terms mm -hmm. of if Winthrop understand that the threat is there. Well, they're not going to find out. <laughs> the A site is uh, not too covered up down in May, but I think they get a free one here, especially with Nasi slowly moving now. B-Dog in a great position, but taken down, so that's the up gone. Yeah, now the Neural Thug immediately called. And with a stack up with a spike over towards mid map, they can get a read on what they want to do. Annihilation is going to be spent, though, for Adder, just trying to hold everyone kind of in place just for a moment. Not really able to connect with too much, so he has to back in towards the site. He just will drop on the rotation. This is a long lurk, but Adder does well to get two. Makes this more manageable. 3v2 situation, but with that lurking kill from Infiltrator, he'll hit them from the shadows, jump over, and get the plant at B, with now all of a sudden Moobs finding himself as the rogue agent. And Stellar will have to try to navigate a 1v3. Oh, but they catch out Moobs here. Oh, the timing of that is insane holding the angle and they had it for a couple seconds just one more second and it possibly could have been moves getting taken down but 10 to 9 i mean winthrop definitely not letting anything go without a fight two oh, ultimates though nice. set up on the side of ttr and they're super important they're the really big aoe's right so when you're looking at both that nightfall and now the viper's pick coming up you have so much space that can be taken up by ttr just in seconds so the retake or even just site hold looking pretty strong within this round absolutely I mean, this has been a really great half for Winthrop and kind of looking over the course of their history, like we kind of mentioned, they played it a lot. This was kind of a stapled map in their open qualifying run to get here in the first place. Yeah. And a lot of the time they were forced to have to start things off on offense. Um, and when they do, it's usually pretty successful for them. So getting five on the defensive half is more than okay. It, it's one of those things that, yeah, it was a little sloppy at times and both teams kind of had a couple of whoopsies here and there, but so far, the double initiator on offense has been really clean. I'm just kind of surprised that Troop is actually playing as forward as they are because they're getting hit by a whole lot of Nasi's uh, utility right from the get-go. Nasi's a very, very good breach. Not only that, they're also managing the IGLing, and I think that's such a good mix, right? You're, you're making the calls while also initiating them as well, and I, I think that's such a great thing too because it gives more cohesion to the team and then obviously allowing Infiltrator to do what they do best put themselves onto the site, execute that, and, and find the space as well. So it, it really does feel like we're seeing a lot more cohesion than I honestly feel like I saw on the defense there, especially with playing with each other, playing for each other, sure. and, and just making things happen. But with a tech pause, I mean, slowly working its way up 22nd mark just to get prepared, and Winthrop are not playing around with the A site. I like it. it and it's one of those things too that like double initiator can get a little bit messy if you just don't sit and coordinate with your other initiator your whoever the opposite initiator is and be like hey yeah. i want to do this you hit that let's make sure we're actually layering our utility correctly but that hasn't been an issue at all for the eagles they've looked really really good at breaking down these sites and honestly for adder 
continuing to play in front of these sensors is a bit peculiar. You would have thought that he would have used those as a kind of an alarm system towards potential A hits, but continues just to drop the barrier mesh at the front door and then maybe using those sensors as a retreat tool here and there. But Winthrop, fine just to back away. Prowler will see a lot of this, and B Dog, look for the stray shot through mid, isn't able to connect, will stay 5v5. Yeah, the wall originally making it harder for Winthrop, but now finding themselves even more aggressive than they were before. Of course, one pick is all they need. They get one, they move themselves up even further, but it's core to actually shut this down. Nasi with a refrag. Zero rifle down for the time being. Should mm -hmm. be collectible, depending on who rotates where. Market getting a little bit of attention from the utility for Winthrop, but largely this is on moves, trying to clear things out. Again, really the only thing in the way are these sensors. And if you take down Adder, you take down a lot of the threat, and there you go. So it's, that's the thing is, it's like, I'm just surprised Adder keeps playing so far in front of these sensors because they just become left. kind of non-issues on the yeah. defensive side of things. And then you pretty much get taken out. You're, all of your utility is gone before you can rely on it to help you gather that information. Move so finding themselves down, down towards the back a. of sight. So you got one down, and now the spike is yours. Two v two. So not much of an advantage on both sides. Dirk spy cam will read that the retake is on the way, but the plan comes through. Fear. Nice ball gets spent. That will tether them Last up. One for one goes the initial trade, and B Dog has knives. And oh, moves under the cover of muted footsteps and sounds will take an aggressive route around the back. Does B Dog get the timing? Does he predict this? Does he predict this? Oh, the Ooh. click's not quite there. Moves just kind of crouches underneath the knives. That's enough for Winthrop to get to 11. Looking mighty fine on the offense. And a huge clutch. Moves going from uh, struggling to keep up with the team on the defense to basically just, just going above and beyond and playing a hell of a game on fade. And it really is starting to show the comfort this is, the again, the first game of the day, too. So uh, when you're looking at it, it does take some time to warm up. Winthrop, too, like slowly getting used to the customs of what Challengers is, playing against teams that they have never played against before from coming from that collegiate space. So it, it, it is a brand new setting and it is a brand new thing to do. But I think that that chaoticness of what Winthrop is, is really playing well against Turtle Troop and, and, and their very, very togetherness. Well, this will be the final time out here for Troop and... A lot of things to think about. I think a lot of it is just, do we really want to not want to? I mean, I, it's just, it's, I, I, let me back up. It's just wild to see the teams play yeah. defense so polar opposite, mm -hmm. considering the comps that they have. Yes. You, you would have <laughs> thought that, you know, Troop would have wanted to play maybe a little bit more on the slower side of the offense and then defensively play again a little bit slower just to kind of make sure that we did and adder can find a lot of value off their utility but that's just not been the case they're playing forward into these double initiators and winthrop are honestly kind of feasting on them for it yeah too like we i was excited to see the deadlock and i think they play it very well when it comes to the mesh but i don't think when it comes to the sensors it's it, it, it tends to really conflict with the play style that comes wow. through, but Infiltrator already getting the site completely empty on the side of Winthrop. So uh, that's like going to be a super beautiful play. I like it a lot. Plus, now you've got the trap wires behind just to make sure your flank stays completely safe. So you're more than happy to set up this post plant right inside of B main. Market getting cleared out pretty quickly. Same could be said for Corey over towards the backside. So the longer this takes, the more of that trip will be pretty aware. The post plant's deep. Look at the rewrap coming off for Winthrop. They are going to rewrap back towards Market. And the timing of this could be exquisite. Because there's the Rolling Thunder coming out. Adder able to find two, though. Oh, no, it's gone wrong. Infiltrator needs to hold his ground. The beat on covers. Now it's just down to Jerk. Playing is just inside a Market. The pinch is still looking pretty decent. One post plant defender on one side, one on the other. Toggle of the spike doesn't really bait out Winthrop at all. They play it perfectly 12 9 the count winthrop on map point now that's Match a huge point. split relying on nasi to just to use all of that util and have anybody waiting right there. Uh, just within where jerk was to jiggle peek to take those fights when the util comes out okay flash you know jerk peaks and there comes the angle so i think that was honestly great teamwork coming through from winthrop and hence why honestly the attack is just looking a lot better um, than it originally was, but I'm threatened by Adder and that ultimate. They have gotten so many picks when it comes down to it. And honestly, I'm, I'm a bit afraid as to what's going to happen down there. Well, the thing is, this is not a very comfortable buy-in. Uh-oh. <laughs> wow. 
The Annihilation just lands just as Infiltrator tries to make the play forward. An attempt was made, but Adder holds everything down, finding two kills. Corey tapping away, secures the third. And the Viper's Pit, of course, blocks any entry towards B. So this map is anything but over here, Gompers, as Nasi and Gucci have themselves a 2v5. And there's no reason not to go for this, but mm -hmm. it, they're going to be hard-pressed, I think, to pull this one out. One enemy remaining. Yeah, they've already lost so much, too. And <gasps> in the starting couple of seconds, Gucci finally takes it back. At least now for a 1v2. Well, the probability of this ending in a good way. Slightly slim, 70 health. Weed is the only one to be able to upgrade the weapon. Prowler doesn't fully connect. Gucci just still playing around. Teleports back. Can he find the 1v2 for the win? Snake bite. Haunt, both coming one through. Gucci remains. down to 1 Aww. HP. Finds the first, but the decay too much. We did secures the kill, and we'll go a little bit further. Was a good approach. Keeping themselves stuck on the outskirts, waiting for that smoke to dissipate. It's the curtain drops, and of course you got two players just watching the angle, and it's super unfortunate, but yeah, TTR. I mean, putting up a hell of a fight, though, and trying to keep themselves on the board, and it's a bit unexpected, I, w I would say. Like, again, Winthrop, uh, the, the underdogs of the story just making their way and proving to everybody that they, they can be here, and they do deserve to be here as well. But of course, Match Point been stuck on it for the past round at least, so just really wanting to lock this down before we do get to that 12-12. Well, the thing is, this is not going to be an easy round to secure. You've got pistols, stinger, and really just a neural theft. So Troop will have an opportunity with two Guardians to potentially upgrade these if they can secure the round. B-Dunk gets one. Not the end of the world for the defense here. Plus, again, playing forward means that Winthrop have to be very calm and collected in terms of how they want to open the site, especially as they've lost their fade. Okay, info actually received down in mid by Stellar. And TTR are waiting very, very patiently. An eruption could happen, though. Again, we have the attacking we side, the exactly showstopper. Now, I mean, putting forth the Neural Theft, so they can very much so have a pretty good take onto site and a good understanding as to where everyone is. Can Infiltrator connect? Oh, the trigger discipline. Does eventually work out. Paint shells just to block the deep side of this back B site. Plus a boom bot that could be followed up just again, create a bit of nuisance towards this retake attempt. Haunt comes forward, Adder finds one. And again, quickly they come. Nasi cannot hold on to this flashpoint. He has to keep the gun up. Orbital Strike blocks off that back A main. Nasi remaining. from inside the site does well. Gucci follows, and this might be just about wow. it. And it wow. sure is. Nice shots in. coming through. And Winthrop will take their map pick 13 to 10. Ooh, we got ourselves a series. Oh my gosh. And I honestly, I was expecting two to one coming through from Winthrop. I didn't think it was going to be this map. I thought with the deadlock that there was going to be so much more power being put behind the defense, especially with the mesh. Like, I genuinely thought that they would have worked around that. But I feel like, honestly, Winthrop was just unstoppable. The consistency in pushing themselves onto site, uh, whether that be gathering information early on or just waiting for the team to give themselves away, with, whether that be with an early prowler, you know, to push out through mid and stuff like that. So I, I do. You have to big, give a big congrats over to Winthrop. This was an amazing game. Yeah, it's just a very strange one because I think we both thought coming into it based on the composition they were going to play it kind of opposite for both of these two teams. Not quite the case though. So already Winthrop off to the races. 13-10 win on their map, but now they have to go over to Turtle Troop Selection, which puts us on a very tricky Lotus. We'll come back after the break, break everything down, and we'll set up for map number two. Don't go far. I feel like a similar playstyle to mine would be... Uh, Mitch. I feel like me and Mitch, unironically, have a pretty one-to-one playstyle when it comes to initiators, at least. I have a different role than he does, but I think me and him play the game very similar. Dapper. Um, due to the fact that we both have CS background, and I feel like uh, in CS, I've played a lot with Dapper, and you know I've also watched him play and grow in his... Uh, own ways but i feel like our new york background and our cs background even though he plays sentinel i think that he still has that calculated mindset 
and also that aggressive instinct that comes from our culture uh, in New York. I mean, I don't know, I guess like Durke. Uh, I mean, it's not that he has a similar play style to me, but I just try to replicate a really good disciplined play style, but also combined with a lot of like aggression and peaking and putting him down. So I, I don't know, I guess Ospos and Durke, I guess I just try to replicate them as best as possible. I think Valen and I played a lot similar a long time ago, especially maybe not so much now. I feel like we changed and uh, evolved their game a lot more, but for sure back then we played the exact same way I felt like. Uh, even now, just a little bit, I think uh, we're pretty similar. We we like talked to each other a, a good amount back in the day, and uh, we were playing with similar teammates as well. Maybe that's a big reason, but yeah, I'd say Valen. I've been compared to Vic, especially because my teammates have played with Vic, and we're both Senti players. You know, he played Smokes for a bit of Challengers, but he has uh, kind of the same play style. We're both Sentis. We both like are kind of amers to the community in a way. Um, but yeah, I'd say me and him are pretty similar. No, I think uh, I'm a pretty aggressive controller player, uh, so I think there's not that many in the scene. Uh, a lot of the IGLs that like, um, I just like, I would compare myself to Valent a lot. And, and whenever we played against each other, I thought, uh, I think it's a good IGL. I, I IGL'd before, maybe not as good as him, but he was IGLing. Um, and oh uh, yeah, I just think very similarities. He's a good fighter sometimes, sometimes he's like, obviously as, as an IGL, You'll have like bad games because you're trying to focus on on micros and other stuff. But yeah, it's a Valen or maybe Scuba on Oxygen is pretty like it's a pretty aggressive player. Um, but yeah, I would say probably Scuba or, or Valen. I would say. Peace. 